The conversations on this podcast are between the host and the guest and are not directed at any member of the general public. The information is for your listening pleasure, but is not offering you any personal advice. If you have heard something that you feel may be relevant to yourself, please visit your medical practitioner or mental health provider. A quick introduction for those of you who haven't listened to the podcast before. I'm Daniel, and each week I bring you a conversation with someone who I think is inspirational or brings something inspiring to the podcast. It's about things that change or could change our lives, and that's why I called it Life Changes You. Listen to the range of topics around psychology, mental health, and inspiration, and find out how life changes you. Hello, and welcome to Life Changes You. I'm Daniel. And I hope you've had a good week. This week with me is Jackson Tippett, who is an online fitness coach, model and podcaster. So we're going to get into it straight away. How are you, Jackson? I'm very well, man. Uh, Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. That's good. Look, all the way from Queensland, so not too far away this time for me. Yeah. Man, I'm I'm not going to lie. You're pumping out some podcasts, so credit to you. I mean, look, when I started, you know, it was hard to get even friends to come on. And nowadays I'm like, oh, my God, how do I get through this stack of people? Yeah, it's like, man, I'm finding the podcast world, I reckon it's like the biggest thing in at the moment. Like everyone is wanting to do them. Everyone is wanting to listen to them. I just think it's such a great thing and such a great tool to have to be able to speak to someone else and put out your information to the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think also like COVID helped with getting a lot of people onto podcasting because they were looking for something different and they were looking for mental health and fitness and stuff like that. So it was really good for us starting podcasts. Absolutely. Well, do you want to give me a bit of background about yourself? Yeah, absolutely, man. So yeah, I'm Jackson Tippett. I'm 27 years of age. Uh, I live currently on the Gold Coast, Australia. I am an online coach. So I help people transform their bodies through training, nutrition, uh, mindset, and all of that. And then on the side, I I do a lot of modeling brand work through various companies like Culture Kings, some supplements, skincare, just whatever companies reach out to me and would like me to obviously advertise their products. Yep. And then as of late, uh, well, not as of late, actually, um, I'm actually a podcast host. I've had it for two years. My podcast is the I Am Me podcast. Yeah, I started that up because I wanted to help people mainly through like mental health related issues. Yep. It, it all kind of ties in together, you know, it all ties in with mindset, mental health, a bit about my past and how I overcame it. And one thing led to another and I just started pumping out episodes and it grew and, you know, then I got asked to come on episodes just like yours and... Yep. um it's all just kind of like a, a revolving circle and, you know, you get seen on one page and then someone reaches out to you and I love it, man. I'm just trying to spread the right message and I hope this podcast that I do on yours can maybe help someone in some way, shape or form. Yeah, yeah, look, I'm sure it will. Do you want to uh, actually, I know it's early in the podcast, but do you want to tell people how they can contact you? Yeah, absolutely. So just on my Instagram is definitely the best. I'm on it 24-7. Um, just, I am Jackson Tippett. It's just all one word. Yep. Everything is on there. So if you literally just send me a DM, I'll reply. But if you just click on my bio in my website, everything's on there in terms of coaching podcast and any services. So yeah, everything is just on that one page. Okay, cool. So when you were growing up, say 13, 14, 15, were you someone who was already fit? Were you already playing sports or was it like you got to a stage and you thought, right, I'm going to be super fit? Um, yes, I was I was fit growing up and that was based off my parents, uh, yep. how they raised me. So basically fr- from what I can remember, I, I started – you know, just playing outside when I was very, very young, you know, playing sports, playing soccer, was always active, never really sat in front of the couch and watched TV as a kid. Yeah. was just always out doing stuff. But the main thing also was how my parents raised me in terms of food. We were not allowed to eat anything in terms of junk, no wow. soft drink. It, it was actually 
I'm blessed that my parents raised me like that. I hated it at the time because I was like, you know, they would pack my school lunch and it would be so healthy. And then I'd see other kids and they're opening up and they're, <laughs> yeah. you know, they've got packets of chips and all this yummy stuff. And I'd try to trade them food <laughs> and they'd be like, they'd be like, no way. <laughs> and I think the most unhealthy thing I had in my lunchbox was like a packet of nuts and, right. you know, to the society that's still very healthy. So yeah, yeah, I, I was glad that I was raised like that and it's, it's brought me to learn a lot more and be a lot more knowledgeable about what I put in my mouth as opposed to how that reacts to not only how you look, but your energy, your mood, all of these things are correlated. And I think it's just a massive thing that people need to learn is the fact that if you watch what you put in your mouth, and just if you do some daily exercise, that can fix so many problems that people are suffering these days. So with nutrition, how important is it? Because I know I've read lots of different studies over the years and it's like it's 10% important and it's more exercise than other people say. It's 80% of what you put in your body and 20% of exercise. Where do you think it actually sits? I'm going to be straight up. It's 100 of both. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But if you were to prioritize one over the other, it's definitely nutrition. It's definitely nutrition is going to change your body hands down. Like you could eat perfect yeah, and you could just be a normal person, just go for a, a 30 minute walk a day, not even train. And you could look, you know, relatively good, yeah. but you could absolutely train your ass off. You could go for a run. You could do this, you could do that. And then you could just go eat shit for the day and you'd look shit. So it's 100% nutrition, but obviously, you know, when you put the training in there too, that's when you get even further ahead. So for people who would be looking at you as a trainer, I mean, I've seen you on Instagram and you're absolutely uh, built and you've got lots of great tattoos. How, would the, how long does the average person take to get to what you look like? I mean, you're obviously a great advertisement for yourself because you look fantastic, but you know, the normal person coming in with a bit of weight, you know, they want to, they want to change. Well, let's go. If they want to change, how do you change their mindset? Because I know from my point of view, uh, when I was in my late twenties, I was at the gym all the time. Well, I had a home gym. I was eating really well. I looked amazing. Then I got sick and I didn't look so amazing, but what's the sort of average transformation? Is it a year? Is it 18 months? I guess the heavier someone is, the longer it's going to take, but how long do you really think that it takes for someone to just even make small changes that would spur them on? Yeah, that's a good question. Obviously, it's all dependent. Everyone's body reacts different. Yeah. But I, I like to say, like, if you honestly stick to something 100%, like say I gave you a plan and you stuck to it 100%, we could see visible, visible changes in four weeks. Right. And that that should motivate the hell out of someone because four weeks is such a short time. And you could – I've had clients strip, you know, six to eight kilos in four weeks. Yeah, And that's like a decent amount of, you know, like it's a visual change in the face and the body. And, but I, I like to say the, the good time frame that I like to work with someone just to get a nice transformation in is 12 weeks, Yeah, which once again, it's not like, you know, you lock out three months of your year um, and dedicate that and you can, you can really change your life around. So, yeah, look, it, it's, I mean, saying that it's only 12 weeks, three months, I mean, that's not a lot of time that you need to really put into something, is it, to see a big change? And I guess most people, when they want to do a diet or they want to do exercise, they want to see something quite instant. And I guess that's why pharmaceuticals are so important. Well, not so important, but are, are the easy option, like uh, things to help you lose weight, stuff like that. A lot of people are more interested in getting the result than actually doing the work for everybody's looking for the quick fix it's the same in in mental health a lot of people would rather pay for something some medication rather than go and do talk therapy and that leads me into with you so when you were younger i don't actually know how young much younger you were but you actually started using steroids didn't you yeah 100 percent. yeah i um i pretty much used them as soon as i went in the gym yeah, I don't know. I just I've got a very addictive personality. 
I went in the gym and I was training with people that were bigger than me, obviously using it. Yeah. And I saw their progress and I was like, fuck this. I want that progress right now. Yeah. I, I know how long it takes to build proper muscle naturally. Yeah. And this is different to weight loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to actually build muscle, take it takes time. So I was like, I, I want to try this. And, you know, one thing led to another and I got some stuff off my associates and I put it in and I got very good results. I got exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I felt amazing. I got strong. I was recovering, you know, like an athlete. And that's where it all just went spiral because I got addicted and I kept using more and more and I didn't want to get off. You know, like all drugs, they lead to side effects. So, yeah. So how long do you think you were on it for? Or how long were you on it for? I was on it for, uh, I started around 19 years old, yep. which I don't condone this to anyone. That is, you know, very stupid. Even if you were going to use it, you shouldn't even, you know, touch it until you've late 20s, in my opinion. Yeah. Not telling anyone to use it, but I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I think I used it from 19 till about a year ago, so seven years. Wow. Yeah, so it was it was a hefty amount of time. And so when you started it, and you, you just said that the results were pretty much instantaneous. They came pretty quickly. How long do you think it was until you started to see those side effects? Because seven years is quite a long time. How long before you started to see changes that were detrimental to what you wanted? Once again, it's hard to remember exactly. Yeah. But I reckon the first two years were cruisy. Yeah. I just felt like a god. <laughs> yeah. And then... Even like the third years, yeah, you might, you know, feel a little bit of this or that or some type of side effect. But I reckon it was the last three years where it really just just little things like, you know, the the libido, the liver was getting elevated, which led to, you know, very tired. The urine was very orange. Even just more like my how I treated people. Yeah. How, how I even was talking to people was not like I talk to people now. And I didn't realize that. Like, I just thought I was, I thought everything was just normal then. But now I look back at it and I, I treated people very bad. Like, I treated my parents with such disrespect. Yeah. And I just think that's what drugs do. And that's why I want to try help people not to use them is because you don't actually realize until you get off. But the thing is, so many people never can do what I do. They can never actually get off or break out of a drug addiction. So they don't know. But what I'm trying to say is I can guarantee you if you're on any drugs, steroids, ice, heroin, you are a different person when you're on it. And when I say different, I mean you're not a good person. You'd be a lot better off without it. Yeah. And that should be enough to play through someone's head to not get on it. So when you say that you were sort of two, three, two to three years were pretty cruisy and then you started to get these side effects, when you started to get the side effects like decreased li libido, liver going up and your orange urine and slightly aggressive, was that something that made you want to change straight away or did you still see the benefit of the steroid outweigh the rest? Uh, no, I, I was pretty... Um... I don't know the word, pretty arrogant. I just kind of like just brushed it off, you know? Right, yeah. I was just like, oh, yeah, you know, like I'm sure it'll come back better or, you know, maybe this is only as bad as it will get. Yeah. Um, like it won't get any worse. And obviously, you know, I was looking great. I'm not going to lie. I was strong, et cetera, all of that. And I kind of think I was prioritizing that over my health. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking about, oh, well, you know, maybe if I keep this up, I might actually not be here for long. Yeah. And I, I think it just came with maturity and obviously a lot of pain through my parents and just slowly starting to see people realize that, yeah, I wasn't who I was. Yeah. And that's when it was kind of like, okay, you know, maybe this is actually not good for my body and maybe I am better off without it and why do I actually need it? Like, am I going to be doing this when I'm a father? All of those type of yeah. things. And, yeah, eventually I got off and it, it was very, very hard. I'm not going to lie. I, I can see why people go to rehab or 
they yo-yo, you know, they get off drugs and then they go straight back on it because it's it's really not easy to be on something for, you know, years and then just break it out of your, your daily habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, I mean, from what I've learned over the years doing counselling and psychology is, you know, when you have those personality changes, you don't necessarily see them because you're still feeling like you're good. You're almost in a state of, I guess, denial uh, that anything's changing and almost feeling so good about you, oh, a, a feeling of e- euphoria about your life. Like everything feels good because you're looking good and you're feeling good. And it's only when people start actually talking to you and saying, hey, look, you, you know, you're not being nice to mom or you're not being nice to your mate or your girlfriend's not very happy. Then you start to realise that these things are changing, don't you? But it, it's still hard to actually accept that that's what is happening. Yeah, 100%. I actually got off steroids multiple times and then went back on so for anyone listening i actually didn't just like cold turkey it i tried i got back on i tried i got back on i think that happened about six times before i actually stopped wow yeah so it was it was really hard and i'm pretty strong in the mindset and pretty like pretty good at doing stuff like you know if i tell myself to yeah and i still couldn't do it you know what i mean so yeah it's hard well done to you for actually getting off it and, and persevering because people I know who have experimented with drugs and stuff like that, you know, it takes them a long time to actually finally get to the point where they go, that's it, I can't do it anymore, and they stick with it. I guess it's the same with smoking or giving up anything that you're addicted to. It's not always the first time that it happens or the second or third or fourth. And as you're saying, it was the sixth time and it was a roller coaster on, off, on, off. But well done for getting off it. I mean, that's amazing. Thanks, man. Like, yeah, I, I'm obviously getting a lot of positive feedback now because I'm starting to talk about it on my podcast too. Man, when I just get like a little bit of a, you know, someone messaged me or a testimonial or something, that just keeps me going, man. Like, I just love it. I love seeing that I've changed and I'm helping people's lives. And that's, I've said on another podcast, but that is my drug now, you know, that's my drug. And and so, look, if you stop steroids because you still look ultimately physically fit like really good so when you stopped the steroids did you lose well you must have lost some muscle mass was it a shocking amount to you or were you able to work your way through it by still working out and still staying fit and diet and stuff like that i lost a fair bit but i once again i actually don't want to be big anymore like even though i'm still big to the population i'm a lot less big than i was (laughs) yeah so my size right now, for example, I'm still 95 kilos. Right. So 95 kilos, you know, not fat. Like it's still a fairly big human for 20, 27 years old. Yeah. So like I don't actually want to be bigger. I got up to 130. It was just ridiculous. Like it's just not needed in life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, like obviously I weight train every single day. Like I, I love it. Like I'm in there every single day getting it done. Yeah. And I think that held a lot of my base. Whereas if you were to just get off and never go to gym again, you would literally lose absolutely everything. Yeah. 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 You don't, you don't hold anything whatsoever. And look, I guess you have a unique perspective as a as an online coach, uh, well, fitness coach, is that you've been through the steroids, you know what it does to you, and you can help people to realise that they can do what you've done by just having a healthy diet and exercise program rather than turning towards things like drugs. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's that's kind of the message that I'm trying to put out there, really. So, Yeah. So that's really good what you're saying about, uh, you know, getting off the steroids and changing your life around and helping other people. Why do you find mental health so important? Yeah, good question. Man, I, I think it's it's probably the most important topic that should be talked about in this day and age right now. And the reason is every single person suffers mental health. Yeah. I don't care if you're the top celebrity, you're this, whatever it is, we all at some stage have dark down days or feel depressed or have bad thoughts or get emotional. I think that, yes, yeah, some people can deal with that and they just, you know, flick it off their shoulder and it's a new day. But there's 
probably 90% of people that if they, for example, feel depressed or whatever it may be, or they're suffering something, they don't really have anyone to talk to or no one checks in on them. That's when these type of people bottle up their thoughts. It becomes really, really bad. And it usually leads to stuff like, you know, suicide, et cetera. And man, I've heard countless cases. And if you don't really associate with this type of scene, like the mental health, yeah, you might hear of someone die, you know, once a year. Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, there are people dying every single day, even people I know based off suicide. I've had four mates this year, four good mates die because they've committed suicide. And honestly, they're normal people. I talk to them every day and they were f- perfectly fine. And that's that's the fuck thing about this is I talk to them and they don't bring the issue up. Yeah. But they're suffering underneath somewhere. And this is why it needs to be talked about more. Yeah, look, we do really need to remove the stigma around mental health, uh, around suicide, because a lot of people, I think, with suicide, there's still that taboo that they don't want to talk to their kids or they don't want to talk to their friends about it because it's sort of it's not accepted in society and we need to accept that it happens and understand why people are thinking about suicide and what things are happening in their life to trigger these sort of thoughts and let them know that whatever you think is the worst thing happening to you and you can't cope anymore. There is always someone there that you can talk to, whether it is a psychologist or a psychiatrist, there's so much advice out there and so much stuff on the internet that you can read and, try and get some perspective because what feels like the end of the world right now, tomorrow can feel completely different because we never know what's going to change in the next 12 hours, 24 hours, week. So so most times there, there is a solution and it's just either waiting for it or looking for it. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, it's people overcomplicate it. It's so simple. Like it's as I said, it's just something like I try to put up even a story once a day related around something to do with mental health. I go check in on a few people. I always say on my story, you know, if you want to reach out, I don't care if I don't know you, just send me a message. I even send people my number if I see they're struggling or something. All it is is just like those people that suffer, they just want to know that someone's there for them and they, they yeah. actually are cared for like they're not just a nobody in the world and that's all it is yeah oh definitely look uh mental health i I think uh, as we went through covid a lot of people who probably hadn't had any anxiety or depression sort of felt like what everybody else feels because they were at a time where things that they would normally do they weren't able to do some of them found they were in relationships that they weren't comfortable in i mean uh, the the divorce rate, it's not published very often, but divorces went up an astronomical amount during, well, after COVID because people were used to seeing their partners after work on the weekends but not seeing them 24 hours a day. And when they actually had to live with people that they weren't used to living with all that time, they realised that, well, some of them didn't have much in common, some of them didn't actually like each other. And in some ways COVID probably... I don't know. Look, there was benefits and there was uh, things that were bad in it, but I I think a lot of relationships uh, were really tested during that time. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I I agree, man. That yeah, that that rocked a lot of stuff. The COVID, but I feel like it's it's over. Hopefully, yep. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't come back and we all go back into lockdown and all that shit. (laughs) Look, I don't think that's going to happen again. But you know, yeah, it was a it was a testing time, wasn't it? And. You know, I mean, look, we all have anxiety at some stage and uh, we all have, uh, I guess, some depressing times, but most of us are able to get through that. But for those who aren't, then uh, there there is help available. Although, look, saying that, I know here in Australia, the waiting lists for free mental health stuff are months away. You know, you can't get in unless you can afford to pay for a psychologist or someone like that. Yeah, I agree, man. But, you know, that's why... My page is always open, you know, send me a message. I mean, there are many people out there. You just got to find the right people. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, I only started Instagram, I think, two or three years ago, and I realised how many mental health people were on there. And it was just amazing to see all these different people like yourself doing fitness and stuff like that. There are just so many people in the community that are out there to help. And before that, I didn't even realise any of that existed. I just lived in my counselling head where, you know, I knew psychologists and stuff and seeing all the different types of people out there helping with all different things from anxiety, depression, suicide, awareness. You know, it's amazing that there's so many people out there helping people. Yeah, 100%, man. So best thing to do is, you know, if you listen to this, maybe, maybe click on my page or click on your page, look look at related people that we follow and, um, you know, go go browse through and support some people and um, they'll probably support you back, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And that's what I kind of do. So it's great to see what you're doing with the podcast, man. And yeah, as I said, like, let's just keep it up and ho- hopefully it grows and we can build this better that, you know, like it's not weak to speak and it's normal for men to cry and all of those types of things that they're kind of like put aside, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it needs to be brought up and just just become a priority, I reckon. Yeah, it needs to be normal conversation, doesn't it? I love what you just said about not weak to speak because, look, I was also reading an article the other day that was saying that there's a higher percentage of women that have mental illness. But then I just got to thinking, well, it's probably because a lot of men just feel like they have to carry it themselves, like they can't go and speak to a doctor or any health professional because they just feel like, oh, I need to deal with this. So it might end up that we are equal, you know, male and female of same amount of mental health issues. Um, And I know that in men between the ages of, I think, 16 and 24, the suicide rate is the highest in either gender. So that shows us that young men need to uh, have people to talk to to be able to work out what's going on so that they do get the help and they don't end up completing suicide. 100%. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. All right, Jackson, it was great to have you on. Thanks for coming on and having a chat. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, yeah, just th- thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I can't wait for the episode to drop. Hopefully we get some good feedback and some shares and stuff like that. Just for anyone, yeah, listening out there, just once again, just know that my page is open. Um, don't hesitate to just send me a message. Um, it, it really could save your life or, yeah, I, I'm always happy to try help. Also, you know, there's just so many people out there that they doubt themselves in life. This is not to do with mental health. They don't really live life to the fullest, you know what I mean? They don't realize their full potential. They don't realize what you can actually do in your lifespan, whether that's 50 or 80 years. Like, I think if everyone listening, like, have a real hard crack at life, see what you're capable of, go chase your dreams. You know, you've only got one life, just make the most of it. Oh, definitely. And you are on um, Instagram as I am Jackson Tippett. I am, yep, I am Jackson Tippett. All right, beautiful. So let's hope some people go and check out your website and have a look at your pictures and uh, maybe do some online fitness coaching. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate it. You know, if it goes well, we'll have to do another one. I'll have to get you on mine too, so yeah. All right, no worries. Well, thanks for joining me, Jackson. Have a great day. Thanks, brother. All right, bye-bye. Well, that was another episode of Life Changes You. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and share on social media and subscribe. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram and watch live conversations on Wednesdays and get daily updates. You can also follow the YouTube channel and watch live conversations and listen to the podcast from there. Keep sending in your emails and messages as I love reading them and interacting with you, and I'll always respond to you. So until next week... Take care of yourselves and each other.